Ansem is an artist who learned glass blowing when working as a casual laborer. For the biology and English graduate, this was not part of his life's blueprint, but interest and passion drove him. Um, it was sort of a uh, no-brainer, really, um, other than the fact that my mum was already in glass doing stained glass and needed some flat glass for her work, and that was all imported. Um, to start a recycling aspect of it was that there was all this material that's not being used, and so it seemed like an untapped craft that Kenya, Africa needed very much. It's a very old craft, glass blowing, and so we felt that it was a good idea to try and introduce it. Kitangala Hot Glass is known as one of the world's top glass artifacts company. With over two decades in the business, the company has a large client base both locally and internationally. So the, the middle and upper classes, the, um, we look at interior designers and architects, corporates obviously, um, we, try, we do a lot of larger scale installation pieces, it's not just um, individual tableware objects like you saw being made, we also do big windows and screens and walls of glass and such like. Um, churches obviously, um, hotels, restaurants, that sort of thing. One man's trash is another man's treasure and he uses waste materials to make an array of beautiful unique pieces ranging from wine glass to chandeliers, murals and glass furniture. Bottles aren't our only source. Um, our, actually our main material is scrap window glass and so from the building industry, all of the buildings that go up, if you cut out a window pane that has to be a certain size, the piece that's left over is thrown away. Window glass is essentially a very cheap material. It's, um, so yeah, we will have a lorry standing by to pick it up from any of the glazing companies. But there are always hurdles when it comes to business and it has not been any different for Ansem. All of, all of our specialist materials are imported, obviously. Um, having said that, the skill is swiftly picked up by Kenyans. They're, they're brilliant at doing it. My guys are far better than I am now. I, I just spend my time behind the computer communicating and putting out fires rather than lighting them. Um, we, we have had challenges in the fact that we do make a luxury product and in a, our economy, which isn't great all of the time, when people are cutting back, the first things to go are luxuries. And so this is to try and uh, to build a market where perhaps a, a, a thing of beauty or an object of, of prettiness is not regarded as a pure frippery, but as a necessity in one's life. If you're looking at something beautiful and it makes you happy, what price that <laughs> object? So. According to him, there's more to business than just making money. He says creating environmental awareness with his craft gives him the greatest satisfaction. To streamline, to keep it, to keep it alive, to educate as many of my, the people around me as possible as to the amount of beauty they can add into their lives with a small investment. <laughs> um, to, to create awareness, actually, more than anything else. Everything we make is made out of trash, so that's, a, that's kind of a nice thing. Um, it's not wildly profitable, having said that, but it, it's uh, spiritually profitable.